Hi everyone, um, I'm Arnaud Varin. I'm, uh, I'm part of the, the Spotfire product management team. And today I'm very happy to be here to, to present what's new in our latest release, uh, Spotfire 11.2. In this presentation, I do not expect to make any forward looking statement, but in the case I do, uh, we have this standard disclaimer in place. To begin, here is a, a quick reminder of who's Tipco and what we do. Um, our mission as Tipco is to help our customers innovate by providing the most advanced software tools and capabilities to connect their systems, unify their data, and predict the future. And we do this with the Tipco Connected Intelligence and the, its three pillars, connect, unify, and predict to solve the most complex problems for the world's biggest companies across all industries. Focusing on the predict pillar that provides capabilities around visual analytics, data sciences, and streaming analytics, we see that one of the main reasons why enterprises choose Tipco is because we provide market-leading technologies for every type of analytics, and because we can help solve every type of problems that involves understanding data to figure out what happened in the past, what's happening right now, and help you predict confidently what's going to happen next. Now, if we look more specifically into Spotfire, while Spotfire may, may be most known for visual data discovery or for more advanced use cases, the truth, I mean, what we see every day is that customers use Spotfire across all analytics and business intelligence use cases. Spotfire is a full, full spectrum platform supporting visual analytics and data science, dashboards and reports, on the field use on mobile devices, analytic applications, and even embedded analytics. In addition to, to supporting all these BI use cases, um, with Spotfire, you can use any kind of data for insights, statistic, statistic data, statistic, static data, real-time data, big, small data, in memory or in database, and in any combination. Now, if we look at the, the analytics market, what's happening right now is a grid convergence. We see a convergence of technologies with human insights, data, machine learning, and automation coming together. And we also observe a convergence of user types, a convergence of personas. If we look at data or analytics team, which are composed of uh, data analysts, uh, data scientists, domain experts, data engineers, or business experts, they are also focused on these four aspects. And we solve this with the hyper-converged analytics, something TIPCO uniquely can deliver, bringing visual analytics, data science, and streaming capabilities together in a seamless experience that delivers immersive, smart, real-time business insights in an easy-to-use and tailored way, and built for data-driven decisions at scale, both by human and automated processes. And we are not the only one observing this trend. We see this report from Gartner, where it's exactly what they explain, with analytics, data sciences, data management, and operations colliding and converging. And at TIPCO, we see this with, of course, Spotfire, TIPCO data science, and TIPCO data virtualization, and AI inside these projects, driving this convergence. We also work very closely with cloud vendors who provide the building blocks to help us enable the best of breed analytics, data science, and data management. And so at TIPCO, we are very well positioned to do this, to blend data integration and analytics with data in motion, as well as data at rest. Okay, so let's now dive into Spotfire 11.2. Spotfire 11.2 will be available shortly as a mainstream release. 
Just to remind you, mainstream releases are frequent releases. Uh, we have a new mainstream release approximately every one or two months. And these releases are dedicated to customers who want to access the latest improvements and enhancements as quickly as possible. So if you're using Spotlight 11.1, I encourage you to update to 11.2 as soon as it becomes available. And if you're using a long-term supported release, Spotlight 10.10 and 10.3 are still the current LTS releases, still under support, and they are not affected by this release. So what's new in Spotlight 11.2 then? In this release, we have new capabilities and enhancements for accessing data. We bring some of the top requested features for visual analytics. We provide enhancements for mods developers and new APIs. And for administrators, we added, we added support for Windows 2019 in application virtualization software. We start by looking at data access. With the 11.2 release, um, Spotfire supports connecting to GeoJSON files and makes it easier to add custom geospatial data into your analysis. It works in the exact same way as you're used to with Shapefile, and it works with both the Windows uh, Spotfire client and the web client. If you don't know what a GeoJSON, GeoJSON is, uh, this is an open standard uh, that is designed to represent geographical features along with spatial or non-spatial attributes. And this format is used a lot uh, for sharing geospatial data. So starting with Spotfire 11.2, you can use GeoJSON files to create maps. Self-service access to Brightlight GPU database Brightlight is a GPU accelerated database capable of delivering in memory millisecond performance of push down queries. It provides a snappy user experience analyzing data without having to import data into Spotfire's in memory engine. And because Brightlight is a Postgres SQL standard database, it means that it is fully supported by Spotfire's built in connector to Postgres SQL with a seamless user experience when working with enormous amounts of transactional data or location data. And of course, it supports visualization modes. In Spotfire 11.2, the Spotfire connector for MySQL supports single store on Tipco Cloud Spotfire and Tipco Spotfire Cloud Enterprise. Single store was formerly known as MemSQL. All right, let's move over to visual analytics. Um, removing all and none options from filters. Um, this, one, this, this was one of the top requested features on the Tipco IDs portal. And yes, in Spotfire's 11.2, you can now remove all or and none options from this, the item list box and radio button filters. We think this will be very use, useful to many users. Uh, for example, when creating reports where you want the data to always be filtered. The default behavior for filters does not change. All and none options are included by default, but you can decide to remove them on a filter by filter basis. Just right click the filter and from there you have the option to include or exclude all and none options. Another highly requested feature is actually something that we had in Spotfire before the release of Spotfire 10 is the ability to choose a default visualization when you load data in Spotfire. And that's something that we are reintroducing in Spotfire 11.2. You will be able to choose an initial visualization that will be displayed when adding data to Spotfire. For example, if you want to display a table visualization to view the imported data. As a user, you can choose your preferred default visualization from the Spotlight options, and administrators can also specify default visualization for different user groups. And of course, this feature also works with visualization modes. So if you have visualization modes in your visualization panel, 
they will be available here. You see animated bubble charts, network chart, area charts. So you can set visual visualization modes as, as initial visualization when you load data in spot file. Also in Spotfire 11.2, we have updated all the available types of map backgrounds with fresh geographical data to provide a richer, more detailed mapping experience. And since the Spotfire map backgrounds are loaded from the internet, these updated maps are available regardless of your Spotfire version. So if you are using Spotfire 10.10, for instance, the map will be updated too. And here you have a a comparison uh, on two areas at uh, high level and low level, and you can see the difference in precision. For instance, we have, we have many, many more buildings, many more precisions, many more streets also. And this, this is uh, um, already available. If you open Spotfire right now, you have the new map. Another highly requested feature by our users on the TIPCO uh, ID portal is the ability to color cross table cells based on another column value. And this is also part of, this is also part of the Spotify 11 to release. In cross tables, you will be able to color the cells using another column or a custom expression than the expression used for calculating the actual values that are displayed. For example, with this feature, it makes it possible to color a cell according to if its value is higher or lower than another cell value. I will show you quickly how this feature uh, works. So this is Spotify 11.2. I will add a simple data set containing sales and marketing data with um, store performance information here. I click add, okay. And you see by default here, I directly have a table visualization. And this is because I choose from the option to have the table visualization as my default visualization when I load data. By default, it's set to none, but you can choose whatever visualization you prefer. In my case, I like to use the table because it, bring, it gives me a good overview of the data that I loaded. Then I can understand what's next then. Here, I will create a cross tables very quickly. Um, I want to show uh, stores by region. I want to show uh, sales numbers for this year. And I will configure it to show current names here. So here, basically, very simple cross table. I have, for each stores, I have um, some sales uh, indicators here. And what I want to do now, is to color these indicators by their evolutions compared to last year. So I selected here my column, say some class sales, and here, this is where the new setting here, I want to color this grouping here by using another expression, All right? And I just select another columns here where I can have another indicator showing the, the changes between year one and year two. Okay, choose my coloring options, I close. So here I see I have my, as values, I have information about the current year sales and the colors indicates the evolutions compared to last year. One more thing about filters, very quickly. These are some filters. Um, if I go to region here, if I change this to a radio button, Filter, you see we have all and none options. So I can choose to show all region. But what if I just, I don't want to enable the consumer of the analysis to show all regions. Well, now we have this option to include or exclude all and none options. That's what I do right now here. So now in my analysis, I'm obliged, the consumer of this analysis is obliged to, 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 to analyze only one region. And by default, when you exclude all, the filter will select the first value of the filter. Same for list box filters here. I can exclude all, that option, and if everything is, is selected here, but then I can switch between state one by one 
and all is not available anymore. And if I switch this filter to item filter, same. By default, I have all option and none, but I can decide to remove all and none options. We have only one single selection. Okay, let me go back to my slides. With the Spotfire 11 release um, last November, we added the ability to build and use custom visualizations for Spotfire. They are named visualization modes, and very quickly we've seen some traction for modes, and we added new visualization modes on a regular cadence on the Tico Community Exchange and on the on Tico and for Tico Cloud uh, Spotfire. So today, let me show you. Today, if you go to the Tico Community Exchange here, and you can find and download um, new mods for Spotfire. For example, here, the, the spider chart. So I open the spider chart page. That's a nice visualization. I just click download. By downloading this file, you will have a, a .mod file that you will just be able to very easily import in Spotfire and reuse through your analysis. And Cloud Spotfire users, they have access to this analysis. Every Cloud Spotfire users have access to this analysis where every mod published on Tico community is published also here. So we have this page where they can directly, you can directly um, try every mod published on the Tico community exchange. Here, the animated uh, bubble charts, which will load, which should load. Yeah, here. And they can directly add them to their list of visualization by clicking here and B. And then the visualization mode will be available in any, available to add in any of their uh, analysis. And since a few days, we have reached the 10, 10 modes on the exchange, quite a, quite a milestone. We had so 10 modes with the stop time, stop times mode here to visualize stops on public transport. We have the vertical line chart to visualize scatters and lines with a vertically oriented axis, useful to analyze um, depths, for example. We have a 3D scatter plot mode also to visualize three, three variables in a, in a three dimensional space. The vehicle loading modes to visualize cargo loading, useful for logistics. A highly requested visualization on the Tico ID portal with the network chart to visualize relationships and connections between data points. A very nice looking visualization. Another awesome visualization that I just showed you with the animated bubble chart, which animates value over time, values over time by showing movements. Um, movements of data. We also have an area chart to visualize the development of quantitative values over a time period. This one was probably the top requested visualization for Spotfire, and you can, you can have it now. The text chart is also a very simple, but very useful mode to visualize long text easily. And actually this mode was built by a team of students in Sweden. Also recently, we added a stock chart mode um, to visualize movements in the price of a financial instrument over time. And the latest addition since last week, the spider chart, a very nice looking visualization to compare categories of values over our common uh, variables. All right, let's go back to, to what's new in Spotfire 11.2 for developers this time. So like I just said, we already have 10 visualization modes that I just showed and uh, that you can use today. And we want more, obviously. We want more with mods built by Chipco, by Chipco partners, by Chipco customers, and also by individual developers. That's why if you have, if you already have built a visualization mode that you want to share, you can now submit it to the Tipco Community Exchange. If you are interested 
in submitting your own mods to publish on the Tico Community Exchange and show off your work. First, you should visit the dedicated page on Tico Community that I will show you right now here. So we have this, this, this page dedicated of at giving information on how to submit mods to the Tico Community Exchange. And from there, you'll find um, guidelines guidelines and rules, what do we expect from a mod, uh, to read carefully. Um, a checklist also, uh, make sure you prepare all assets between, before submitting your mod. And then once you're ready, uh, here you can access to a, to a web form uh, to submit your mod uh, for review. So if you have a mod already built, if you have ideas um, to build mod, I really encourage you to, to go through this page and, and learn about the guidelines and, and the rules. Now, again, for mods developers, um, we improved the mod developer documentation recently. Um, and to make it even easier uh, to develop mods, we have enriched um, the, this documentation with more details on how to use the API and other aspects related to mods development. You have a new API overview page, which gives an interactive overview of the, of the complete API, including all classes and the relationships between them with the flyout panel that gives you a preview of selected of the, the items that you selected on the tree. And you can easily toggle between the, the API, API overview and the standard API documentation uh, for more, more details. Um, on the methods and on the, on the properties. If you're a mod developer, you will be able to learn how to, to work with readers, uh, which are a central part uh, of, the, of all mod development that lets you consume data and other values from the APIs and to register callbacks and subscribe to changes. And we are also continuously adding more source code examples to the mods GitHub uh, repository. The latest one, uh, the latest addition is the spider chart, um, which was developed in TypeScript, um, rendered with, uh, with D3, and bundled with Webpack. That's a great example uh, of, uh, of mod. Related to the new visual analytics feature I mentioned earlier, we added the C Sharp API to remove all unknown options from filters. This allows you to, to automate uh, this capability uh, with Iron Python scripts or C sharp extensions. Same with um, same for coloring cross tables cells. We added this capability to the, the Spotter C sharp API. So again, you can automate this using Iron Python scripts or C sharp extensions. And last up, administration. With Spotfire 11.2, um, Microsoft Windows Server 2019 is supported with Citrix virtual apps, um, as well as remote desktop services for Spotfire Analyst and Spotfire Desktop. So you can use Spotfire Analyst and Desktop Client without local installation. Uh, Citrix virtual apps, um, this is an application, uh, an application virtualization software that allows Windows applications to be accessed um, via individual devices from a shared server or cloud systems. Well, that's just about wraps up more what's new in Spotfire 11.2. Um, again, Spotfire 11.2 will be available shortly. And as usual, if you want to learn more about this release, you will find a complete what's new description on Tipco community and complete release notes uh, from the documentation website. I thank you very much.